now, in this year, there is a general understanding in the United States that we should return to paper as the record of the vote. And the, uh, the paper should be audited by human beings. And a, there's a preference for a kind of audit, which is called the risk limiting audit, which we have pioneered in the state of Colorado. And I have personally been working to uh, promote uh, the, and facilitate the use of this kind of audit. And the idea of that audit is to sample a certain number of paper ballots that have been uh, marked and compare them to the electronic record that was found on that ballot and to see if they match. And also to count up all of the electronic records, which are called cast vote records, to see if it matches the result of the election or it justifies the outcome of the election. The uh, so-called unofficial result, which is produced by a machine, is uh, checked by human beings who actually look at the paper record of the vote. So the, the key then is that the paper record of the vote must accurately reflect the voter intent on an individual basis and also the paper must actually, each paper must have come from an individual eligible voter. And there should not be two papers coming from one voter and so forth. And, and all of the papers need to be present. So this audit actually checks what is on the paper, but it doesn't check which, which papers they are. Are the papers actually eligible or not? And this is still a, a missing component uh, that needs an audit. And I'm looking to the future to try to propose methods for auditing the eligibility aspect of the paper ballot. There is an interest by the voting machine developers and to some extent the disability community to continue to use machines to capture the voter intent, meaning the vote on the screen. If you vote on the screen, there's an opportunity for multiple languages to be presented and there's opportunity for larger font to be used. And, the, uh, and there's an opportunity to have an audio version of the ballot so that blind people could vote. So all those things were provided by the DRE device. This similarly can be provided by something called a ballot marking device. And the ballot marking device would proceed with the interaction to collect the voter intent and then check presumably check to make sure the voter agrees with what the electronic image now thinks. Then, a, then a, uh, a picture of a ballot is created in software and that it gets printed out on paper and that becomes the record of the vote. So the, the uh, problem with that is that the voter then <laughs> needs to look at the paper to see whether the paper reflects the, vote, the voter intention. And in reality, that doesn't seem to happen. So I have, I'm one of the few people who's been watching for that to see whether people voting on the machines and printing out the paper are actually just taking the paper out of the printer and putting it in the ballot box, which is what they actually do, instead of going to a station where they put the paper down and they read to see what's on it. There is a great opportunity for people who would like to write software to slip into these ballot marking devices to to actually change the outcome of the election by, the, by uh, causing the image of the ballot that gets printed to be incorrect. And they can even be smart about that by seeing which voters look like they're voting with a timing sequence and so forth. That is, makes it unlikely that they will argue that uh, their vote was changed. The other very unfortunate uh, invention that's been added to this is to put the vote inside a barcode or a QR code which digitally represents the voter intent on the paper and unfortunately of course the voter can't possibly read the barcode even if they had a cell phone with them which often is not allowed in the polling place but if they put the cell phone to look at the barcode all they would get is numbers which are meaningless uh, or it, it might even be encrypted. Anyway, it wouldn't be recognizable what the votes were. And 
that means that the that voter intent is not actually verifiable. The uh, there is generally a text that's printed on that paper, and that text that's printed is typically the name of a candidate that was chosen, that was selected, or the number of a ballot issue that the voter voted on, such as uh, ballot question 23B, or something like that. Unfortunately, the voter is not likely to recognize what that number means unless they have the full text of the ballot in front of them. But because the companies prefer to provide uh, a smaller piece of paper in this ballot, with this ballot marking device, and the election officials like to have a cheaper piece of paper, they only put the uh, shorthand for the text. On the actual screen, you would see uh, perhaps a, super, a few paragraphs describing what the, the issue is that's being voted on. But for verification purpose, you will not see that because they're not typically not providing the entire text. But there are a few cases where the voting manufacturers are providing that text, and there's a very few cases where they're not using the barcode. So it is possible to machine print a ballot that looks like one that would have been marked by hand. And that's the type of ballot I prefer to see used in the election, because at least it is verifiable. It still might not be verified, and for audit purpose, we need the ballots to be verified, which means the voter who used the machine to mark the ballot actually looked at the paper to see what is on it. Because if they don't, then the machine can easily <clears throat> leave off some votes or it can change a vote that the voter is not likely to see. If the voter actually does see a discrepancy on the paper, then it becomes their challenge to try to convince an official at the polling place that the vote was incorrectly recorded, but of course they have no proof of that, so that's a very difficult challenge for them, and they're rather unlikely to make that claim, and they're likely to be embarrassed, and they're likely to think that they made the mistake and not to call attention to it.